What's up, guys? I'm going to be showing you how I load my shot shell ammunition for hunting. So this is steel shot. I've been loading steel shot. I've been loading heavy shot, bismuth. I'm getting big into tungsten now. And with all the shortage of ammunition, especially prior to hunting season and during hunting season, um, I, I picked up reloading uh, shot shells. I used to reload metallic, but... Uh, I started loading shot shells just because I could not find any lead-free shot shells because I live in a lead-free state. I'm pretty much just showing you guys how I do all this reloading. I have a press, but I'm not going to show you guys how to use it with a press because you do not need a shot shell press to reload. So shot shell reloading is nothing like metallic reloading in the sense of deviating from your load data. So. What the load data is, is what you need to run. You can, I'm, I'm not gonna say you can deviate up or down at all because pretty much these are all tested and if you deviate, you're not gonna be able to crimp your shell or the load height's not gonna be correct. This is all, you're supposed to follow the book exactly how it is. The only difference is that if the load calls for maybe size four steel or size two steel, then you can go to a different size steel that, as long as it's the same payload. So you're definitely going to need some type of published load data. Uh, this reloading handbook doesn't really have that many steel options. It's got some, but um, there's a lot of online manuals you can buy. BPI has a great one. It's the status of steel. It has a ton of steel options. Um, anything from light dove loads, quail loads, duck loads, goose loads, you name it. They have a ton. Second thing you're going to need is getting into their components. You're going to have to find powder. Yeah, it's pretty hard to find right now. But what I would recommend is finding some type of load data first. You can go and do downloadable ones on BPI's website. So you're going to need to find a load in a published load data book or manual online, whatever you decide to go with. That is something that you like, whether it's 2 and 3 quarters, 3 inch, 3 and a half, 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 410, whatever you're, whatever you're looking for. You know, find a load that you like and you need to try to find components for it. So first you're going to need powder. And it's going to be in your published load data. So you're going to need to track down and find some powder. That is getting pretty hard to find right now. Um, you're going to need shot shells. Okay, here's a brand new Fiocchi shot shell. Sorry, I didn't have any camera there. These come primed. You can find these online. They already come primed. You don't need to worry about finding primers, which is pretty much impossible to find right now. This is absolutely empty. It comes with nothing but a primed shell. Next, you're going to need a wad. So there is steel rated wads. You cannot put steel in a lead wad. It, it could very much possibly damage your barrel. So you're going to need to find a steel rated wad. It's much thicker than the lead wads. Uh, this right here is Ballistic Products uh, PT series. They have a bunch of steel rated wads. They have the PT, the CSD, uh, TPS, you know, MG42. They have a bunch of them. So, in your in your load data, it will tell you which one uh, that it recommends, and you have to stick with that wad. You can't adjust the wad because that that changes pressures drastically. It it it's crazy the difference of shot shell reloading versus metallic reloading. You're going to need your shot now, and shot is pretty easy to come by. Um, you can pretty much find steel shot anywhere in any size you want. Steel's super cheap. Uh, tungsten is obviously the most expensive. Um, bismuth is obviously pricier than steel. Steel is the cheapest. So if you're looking for steel, this right here is steel number four. Also got it from Ballistic Products. You're going to need to scale, measure your powder, and your shot. Um, and then I have a powder funnel. Makes it easier for going in the shell. I have a, a powder scooper, it just makes it more convenient so I don't have to pour from the bottle. And a roll crimp. So this is what you're going to need if you do not have a press. If you have a press, you can fold crimp it. Most recipes call for fold crimping, but you can, yes you can, uh, roll crimp. Or I guess people will call it roll turnover crimp because it's not an actual roll crimp. But a roll crimp is what you're going to need and you're going to need a drill an electric drill or even better a drill press. Drill press is the best and I picked one up because it makes it so much easier and it makes super even 
uh, rolls. When I use a drill, when I use a, a handheld drill, the the shot shells would be angled because I couldn't I couldn't get it down straight on it. And that's it's up to you whichever one you want to use. But you need something to finish off the shell with. So we're gonna get started here on this load. This here is going to be a duck load. This is a Fiocchi two and three quarter inch shell, primed already. And this is a number four shot, number four size steel. And this is going to be uh, almost an ounce. It's 11 sixteenths of an ounce. So it should be 300 and something grains. Let me just check. 301 grains. That is the payload of the size four steel. The powder I'm going to be using is long shot. I've already pre-calibrated my scale. And reloading steel is kind of a slower, tedious process. There are steel presses out there, but I mean, it, they're, they're, they're pricey to, to get into, but if that's something that you wanna look out more quantity than quality, then uh, you can look that up. Th this is fine with me. I, I was into precision metallic reloading, so I, I, I don't mind uh, manually dropping in powder and weighing every shot charge to the T. It's a pretty nice, uh, it's uh, therapeutic for me actually. And if I usually load up like a box or so before a hunt, getting all excited, you know. So I'm going to take my funnel. You do not need to take to get a funnel, but I just like it so I don't have to worry about spilling it. Once that powder's in there, you're going to want to seat your wad. Okay, so this is that wad I was telling you about, the, the exactly the one that calls for in the uh, published load data that I am using. So I'm going to seat the wad. I'm just using just anything to seat the wad, really. I want to get it all the way there in the bottom. And then I'm going to take my shot charge, which is going to be 301 grains of shot. So I'm going to pour in some. Went over a little bit. Thirty-seven, two hundred and ninety-eight, three hundred one point three. That's the closest that you're going to get. Two hundred ninety-eight, three hundred one, three hundred two. That that's going to work. It's just better to be under than over. So this load calls for a spacer, a felt spacer. So all it is is just brings it brings the. Uh, the shot charge up to allow you to crimp it. And it's really only necessary for the fold crimping because the fold crimper will, if, if the load is, if the whole shot column is too low, it's gonna dish in and not look good. And if it's too high, it's not gonna sit flush all the way and crimp down and it could possibly reopen and it just looks bad. And I actually have one right here. This is what happens when you have a shot column that is too high. It does. I've closed this four or five times and it just gradually opens up. And that's, you do not want that. So I will put in this little felt spacer. Not all recipes have felt spacers, especially the ones over an ounce or seven eighths and above. But what I'm showing you today, that it calls for a felt spacer. So I will take the shot, pour it in there. So here's my overshot card. It's just a thin piece of, it's not cardboard, it's like cardstock. Um, it would be equivalent to like the thickness of a credit card. Uh, I forgot to add this in. This is what you need to roll crimp. You can buy a hole punch kit and get the right size for whatever gauges you want. I usually just make my own. Um, and, or you could buy them online in like 500 packs and they're super cheap. But that is going to need to just be set right on top like that. And so that's what that looks like. So here's the roll crimper that I have. This is a Reloaders Network quad pin. So see those four pins in there? 
this one is super nice. I've gotten a couple other ones. I've gotten some from eBay. I've gotten some uh, from different reloading websites. And this is gives me the cleanest roll that I have seen out of all of them. And you don't need it to look clean and pretty, but if you're like me, then you're going to want to. You might as well just get this one to start off with. This is pretty much one of the best ones that you can get. So this, you're going to need to chuck it up in a drill or a drill press. Today, we are going to be chucking it up into a drill press. All right, guys, so here is the roll crimper chucked up into my drill press. Um, this is a shell holder for the drill press or the um, regular hand drill. This just helps you put the shell on there and you close it so when you're rolling it, it doesn't spin. Um, this is 410 just because the 410 is super small and it spins, but it is not necessary. You, do not, you don't need it and I don't have one for a 12 gauge and I probably won't get one because it's pretty easy. So there's a couple things I'm gonna need to do before I just get to roll crimping. Um, you're going to need to heat this up whether that is with, some people use a lighter. I don't like using lighters or torches because I don't want any open flame around any powder or any ammo that I have. So I'll take a rag and just grab around this, turn on the drill press and it'll start heating up. And then uh, if you guys have like some gun oil, gun oil, like a little dab of gun oil will help it from melting. If it, if it melts, it doesn't look pretty and you might have problems with pressure. So. You want to use a little bit of lubrication and a little bit of heat. All right, so that thing is pr pretty hot to the touch. Um, if you use a couple shells, if you start roll crimping, uh, it will stay hot, so you don't need to do that every time. It's just I like to do it in the beginning, um, just so it gives you it gives us a clean uh, crimp. So here I have a little dab of, uh, of Hoppies gun oil. You do not need much, you just need to oil it just a tad for lubrication. A lot of people will drop a couple drops up into the roll crimper, but since I chuck it up, I, I'm, I don't wanna take it out just to put some, uh, some lubricant in there. So I just add it to the ends of the shells and it ends up working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll crimp this for you guys. And you can kind of feel when the roll crimp has contacted the overshot card. Um, it's gonna take you a little bit to get used to it, but look how pretty that is. The reloader's network roll crimper is just awesome. And uh, you can always uh, do it again if you didn't. Let's see, this one looks like there's a little gap. I can go just a little bit further. If you go too much, you risk uh, you risk deforming your hole. So, I mean, just it, you'll, you'll get the hang of it by feel. It might take you a couple shells or so, but but you'll you'll get it. This one just needs a tad more. That looks good. Yeah. So with that heat and the oil it just made the most beautiful roll crimp and that is your completed shell um, the roll crimp is probably my favorite method just because you don't have to worry with the fold crimp and the different heights of the shell um, or the heights of your payload and it's it's like it's old school you know it's this is this is from like old paper shells, you know, you've seen roll crimps. A lot of 410s are roll crimped. 410s is harder to, uh, to roll crimp for sure. But uh, no, these are cool. Uh, you don't need to worry about um, the, if you have beat up uh, shells with the crimps all deformed, then you can cut, trim those off and then roll, roll crimp them. And uh, I always like to use this overshot card and I will put number four on it. So now I know this is number four since the shell is not labeled. So that is number four and I'll probably put like S 
number four steel. So that is a completed hole. And this is ready to take out to the blind. So I'm gonna do another one for you guys. This is a Rio hole, still two and three quarter inch. Um, it's a little different than the Fiocchi. It's got lower brass on it. See right there, this is also primed. This is a different primed hole, a uh, different primer. It is in a different load, different published load. So the, pri the primers also make a pretty big difference in pressures. So the best is to stick with the load data. I would not do anything else but to stick exactly to the load data. Um, this recipe calls for a completely different powder, a completely different powder charge, and this is actually size seven steel. So you dove hunters or quail hunters up there, any upland hunters that are looking for lead free, I pretty much run seven a lot of people will use six, but I hunt over a dog, so I shoot them up close. Seven's been working fine for me. Uh, this one is going to use 800X. This is way fluffier powder, so it's going to take a lot more space than that long shot, but also less grains of powder. Uh, this load calls for the same exact wad. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of load data with one wad. If you get your manual, your data book, and you find a couple loads that you like, try to find them with the same wad so you don't need to get a bunch of different wads. So I will use my powder funnel again. Dump that in there. Settle it a little bit. Stick the wad in, tap it down, and this load calls for 366 grains of number seven steel. So I will pour in close enough, close enough to 366, 366.2, good enough. There we go, pour that in there. And so you see how the, sh the steel comes up to the top of your wad? Well, the number four, this shell right here that we made had 301 grains of number four and that also came up to the top of the wad. So this uh, number seven size steel, it made, we needed more, uh, uh, more payload of number seven to reach the top because it's takes up less volume. So this is 366 grains, number four was 301 grains. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another overshot card and just push it right into the hole, seat it down like that, and we are ready for roll crimping. So I'm back at the drill press and I have my almost completed number seven steel shell. Uh, I'm going to Let's see, yeah, this, this is not hot anymore. Uh, I'm going to heat it up and put a little oil on this and roll crimp it. A little oil goes a long way, you do not need a lot. wipe off the excess oil so there is another roll crimped hole God, I can't get over that roll crimper it's perfect um, this one is number seven 
The other one was number four. This has a little more payload. Uh, this load is not as fast feet per second wise um, because this is an upland load. You don't need, you know, 1500 plus feet per second to take down a quail. So I'm going to write number. So I'm going to write number 7S. That was a terrible number 7S. Good enough. I don't know what that means. 7 steel. You could write on the hole if you fold crimp it, or if you you know, if you don't want to write there, you can write on the hole. But I like reusing the holes for different uh, different loads, whether it's duck loads, quail loads, you know, turkey loads, slugs. So I like keeping my holes super fresh and uh, no markings on them, but there is a completed load. Let me grab the other one. There are the two side by side. Get that in the frame. Seven and four. Same size, same roll crimp, but different components. Here is uh, just some of the shells that I have loaded. Here's those two that you guys saw me make, the four steel and the seven steel. Um, here is number eight, tungsten super shot. Put duck there, it's duck load. Um, here's another sphero tungsten, number seven, roll crimped again. And then I also have the fold crimps. If you guys like this video, Hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you guys would want me to do a, another video or more reloading videos um, on shot shell reloading. Uh, I do, I've been doing it a lot to prepare for this upcoming hunting season from ducks to quail, a uh, little bit of everything. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to continue doing this because we'd be more than happy to. Thanks.